Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new series in UE4 Tutorials. Uh, this series is going to be covering online multiplayer or essentially how online multiplayer works and how you can get started getting multiplayer into your games. Um, so I'm, the way I'm thinking about approaching this top, uh, topic is going through the first half of the series, going through how it works and the different settings you have to do and the way you set up communication between clients and servers. And then the second half going through um, things like lobby creation and connecting to other people remotely. Um, as everything we're doing the first half, it could work on a local machine. Therefore, you won't need to do any connections at all. So let's first of all just focus on getting the terminology down, how it works, and what's going on behind the scenes. So to get the basic gist of it, you have two things. You have a client and you have a server. Clients connect to server, and the server has, communicates to each of those clients the state of the game. Okay, So each client and server runs their own game instance, but it's the server's game instance which has priority and will have authority over the state of the other game instances. So what that means is that the server's the boss and all the clients will fall in line. Now there's two types of servers. Uh, you've got listener servers and you've got um, dedicated servers. So listener servers are pretty much what peer-to-peer -peer are, so as you connect into a directly to another ho another client, and that client will also be playing the game as the as the host of the game. So the server is both a player and a server of the game, uh, whereas dedicated servers are just clients connecting to a, a a neutral game instance which doesn't have a player connected to it. So each one has its pros and cons. Um, listener servers are a lot easier to set up. So that's what we're going to start with today. So the whole premise of communicating between the client and the server comes down to replication. And how we actually get that communication across to the server from the clients. So first things first, let's talk about how we actually get to test this out. So in your Unreal Engine 4 project, you have to make sure that you've got uh, a player start, which you, in my third person template here, we've got this guy, which comes in as default. And then likewise, as default, you come with another player start, which they've enabled uh, as network player start. But it's just it's just a player start. It's nothing special. So what happens is, is that when we change some settings, we're going to make it so that we can see both a server screen and a client screen. So what we do is go up to your uh, play option, so active play mode. And at the bottom you see multiplayer options. You see number of players, you can change that up on a slider up to four. Um, we're gonna change it to two. And then we're gonna change the net mode. So by default, we will say play offline. So you wanna change this and say play as listen server. So click on that. And then we're gonna click on new editor window to play the game. And when I play this, you'll see I've got two windows now, okay? We've got this one and this one. So this one here is the server on the left and on the right hand side we've got the client. So the server you can see is a playable character that you can run around and you can see the server's replicating movement across to the client. So the client can see the server running around. Likewise, if I were to shift over to the client, if I run around, I can see myself in the server window as well as in the character window. So pretty basic setup already out of the box will work just fine. Uh, and let's say this is running on a local machine, so we haven't had to do any sort of weird uh, connection stuff yet. We'll do that in the second half of the series. So that's the general gist. We've got the client up there and the server up there. Uh, if you want to do three, you can do three, four, up to you. Just change the slider to whatever you want. But we're going to keep it as two to keep it nice and simple and easy to see on the screen. Um, next is actually talking about how it's replicating that movement. So by default, a character uh, actor which is what the third person character is, if I open it up, click on its uh, class defaults up here, and in the detail section, you'll find the option to replicate movement is ticked. And you have a whole section called replication. We won't go through all of these in this video, but we will do by the end of the series. Um, so replicate movement does what you think it does. It replicates the movement over to the clients and back to the server. So this replicates to, um, multicast it essentially across the whole lot. So clients will communic communicate to the server and server will communicate it back to the clients. So movement is the most basic thing and that is uh, registering uh, its position mostly in the space. 
Next, you've got underneath that net load on client. So what this means is basically this uh, this pawn, this character will load when the map loads. Okay, on the clients. So um, pretty basic. Tick that, and you can actually see it. And finally, we've got the replicates button ticked on. Uh, if you don't have that ticked, none of this will matter because it won't work. So you need to have replicates ticked on so it will communicate this actor to other clients. And this is the class default. So if you were to change the replication on any other component or function or event or variable, anything like that, it won't matter unless you've got it to replicate in the class defaults. If you turn this off, none of it matters. So you make sure that's turned on. So by, this is all by default. This is all as it is. Um, so we can see both of them running around. So when we talk about replication, there, there are various things we can do to replicate information across to the server and vice versa. And one of those things is through an event. So most of the time you're doing it what we call an event-based game. So everything's running from cause and effect. So you've got the cause and here's the effect. Okay. So let's do a simple sprint. So I'm going to right click and create uh, the left shift key. And we'll do a simple thing of making it pressed. We'll do, um, we'll get the character movement out and we'll set the max walk speed to a higher number. So when we've got it pushed down, it goes to 1200. And when we release it, we set it back to 600, which is what the default speed is. Pretty basic, right? So let's check, see what happens when I do this. So I'm gonna make sure I go on new editor window and make sure it's at the two and listen server. Hit play. So I've got two windows. So here are my two windows. I've got the server on the left and the client on the right. So the server, I can sprint and you can see the client is seeing the sprinting server. Now that makes sense because the server is boss. So if the server can do it, everyone can see it. And the server basically is controlling the whole world. Okay, it has ultimate power. However, if I were to switch over to the client and hold down shift, you can see a few things. So first of all, on the server side, you can see um, I'm not sprinting. Yeah. And on the client side, you see the stuttering effect. Now, why is that stuttering? Well, your client is trying to make it run faster. However, the server is replicating the movement across to it. So the server doesn't know that you're sprinting. So what it's trying to do is say, hey, no, you're going too fast. This is your real speed. This is your real location. So you're getting a stuttering effect where the character is moving ahead too fast and getting immediately shunted back by the server. So you're not actually running faster. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So let's see how we go about fixing this. So this is a input event and we can't do a replication on inputs. Okay, inputs are local to the client. Okay, what we can do though is change the effect and change where that happens. So let's create a new custom event. And we're going to call this one start sprinting. And I'm just going to copy or cut rather that down to here. Very basic custom event there. And we'll do a stop sprinting as well. Stop sprint. And very similarly, cut that from there and plug that in down here. So what we're going to do now is when we push left shift, we're going to call the start sprinting. And when we release it, we're going to take stop sprinting. So nothing's really changed in the actual logic of it. All it's doing is separate it out into different events. Okay. The difference is though, is that I can click on these custom events and I can replicate them. So if I go over to my right hand side, I can see replicates and you see by default, it says not replicated. If I change that, I've got a few options. I've got multicast, run on server and run on owning client. We will be explaining all of these in due time, but right now you just want to run on server. Now, why does run on server? Remember, the server has ultimate control and authority. So if we tell the server that we're running, then the server's gonna tell everyone else that we're running. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same for down here and hit compile. Now let's test this out. So 
So here's my server on the left, client on the right. Server can sprint, which we saw before, and it's replicated across to client. And the client, no, if I were to sprint, I can sprint, kind of, but I'll get this stuttering effect. So what's happening there? Well, what is actually happening is our client and server are out of sync. Basically, the opposite of what was happening before is happening now. So we're moving ahead. Uh, we're fine, but we're not. We're moving ahead before our client's updated itself. Okay. So what we need to do to fix this is, as long calling the events to start and stop sprinting, we need to also put this again on top of the sprint. So the client is being told we're sprinting and the server is being told we're sprinting. This is only changing the server code, okay? This is changing the local client code. Now the two should be synced up. So when I push play and look at my server and client, uh, server again, shift, no problems there, no, no lag. And if I were to go back to my client, I can left shift, I can sprint to my client and you can see it's replicated to the server. And that would be the same on all other clients as well. Remember, server is boss. So if you see it on the server, you see it on other ones too. So, and you can see there, there's pretty much no lag at all. Okay, that's because the client has told itself to update and it's telling the server to update. And that's quite a common thing you'll find yourself doing quite a lot is telling both to update. Okay, that way you get rid of that syncing issue. That's basic, the gist of it, but there's loads of other options we can do to mess about with our op optimization for online uh, multiplayer. And that's what we'll look at next time. So in the next episode, we'll talk, start talking about, sorry, relevancy and talking about when it's relevant to send data from the server to the clients. If you want to watch that next episode right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Daly, where you can donate just $1, get access to that video, plus many, many others. Remember, if you haven't yet subscribed to the Discord, join the Discord now by heading over to my website, ryanlady.com, and find a link there. Thank you to all of my patrons and YouTube members for their current support. I wouldn't be this doing this without you guys, so thank you so much. And don't forget, if you like my content and haven't yet subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave a comment below about what kind of things you'd like to see next. Thank you again, everyone, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.